Hello Age of Wonderites, welcome to the Dwarf Edition of this How to Play series, and this time we're going through all the Dwarf units, uh, so let's see. We'll start off on the uh, Dwarf Ranged Unit, uh, Tier 1 Ranged Unit, at the cost of 77 gold, 4 upkeep, it is the Dwarf Crossbow Units. The Dwarves are my favourite races. These guys, they just bash their crossbow if it doesn't work for them. That's how it's done. And here is the description. I haven't read many of these descriptions. Um, I really do want to read them. It's just, they're so long. Um, what do you guys think of the descriptions? Do you like them all? Uh, or is there, do you think it's like uh, not as good as the previous games? It's very interesting to see what everyone else thinks. Uh, so, 34 health, 28 movement points, 9 defense and resistance. And they upgrade with uh, armor piercing at the elite level. And armor piercing means that they negate the armored uh, penalty or defense increase. Uh, with armor piercing you deal plus two physical damage, which basically just flat out negates this buff. They do shoot a heavy crossbow, so heavy crossbow deals more damage than a light crossbow. Uh, it's a straight shot and uh, can only be used once, so it'll use all of your remaining action points. They deal six damage per action point. They are armored, so again plus two defense, so it's actually 11 defense, uh, unless they have, you know, the uh, armor piercing ability. They are dwarves. And dwarves inherently gain mountaineering, so mountains cost something like 12 movement points. So you can reduce that penalty by four uh, and move on eight movement points per per tile of the mountain mountains. So you don't move as fast on mountains as you do on plains or underground, for example. Um, and you also reduce the underground movement penalty by two, and you can see plus two vision underground. And also dwarves gain 20% blight prote uh, protection. Which is very good for fighting against goblins. Okay. I do think I covered this. I did, I did, yes. Now here's the dwarven axemen. Do note that they all have like colour-coded beards. So you have to have, you know, a ginger gingery brown beard to be a dwarven axeman. You have to have this dark brown beard to be a, a crossbow man. Uh, and also have access to like, you know, a Thor Hercules style helmet. Anyway. And these are the uh, axemen. We'll go down to the description. The wall of dwarf soldiers advanced, undaunted by the cacophony of battle. Lovely. Go dwarves! Yeah! Okay, so 55 gold, 4 upkeep being tier 1, 42 health, 28 movement points, 11 defense, and 9 resistance. Here's the upgrade path. Uh, on gold metal, they inflict bleeding wounds, and bleeding wounds has 9 potency. It's the only inflictability that I know that they all have a hidden potency. Um, but basically, bleeding wounds, if it is applied to the enemy, um, for, per turn, uh, for two turns, yes, they will take uh, four physical damage. So it's just like a, a bleed ability. Um, so they deal 12 physical damage per action point in melee combat. They are an infantry unit, so they naturally gain wall climbing. They are armoured, so they have plus two defence, so that's actually 13. And again, all the dwarven abilities, but they do also have these uh, very nice shields, uh, very nice golden shields. Uh, so it's plus two defense from frontal attacks or any non-flanking attack. Uh, here's our dwarf prospectors. These are the miners. Uh, let's see, with very interesting helmets. I don't, I don't know what what the methodology behind this helmet is for being picked up by ogres or something. Maybe so you can, you know, get to higher levels of caves. Um, maybe it says it in, in the description. I have to, I'll have to go through these descriptions at some point. Um, yeah. It doesn't mention your weird helmets. Anyway. Um, again, look, these guys have their own unique beards. Uh, so 35 def uh, health, 28 movement points, 9 defense and resistance. Um, they do throw stones at people. They didn't prepare enough to bring any crossbows. Uh, but the th stones themselves actually deal 11 damage, which is quite a lot. Um, but it's a straight shot, so it won't go up and over carts or boulders or whatever. They deal 9 damage per uh, action point in melee combat. They do have tunneling, uh, so they can dig through underground caverns and things. Um, and a regular unit, they are dwarves, gain all the dwarf abilities, and they have the base dwarf light protection. Here's your dwarven pike unit. Uh, these guys just look awesome, with their nice golden blondy beards, or... Well, yeah, they're beards. You can actually see their, their nice golden blonde hair, too. Very nice. Okay, and the description. 
I only caught a glimpse of the deep card before being escorted to the dining hall in the center of Deep Mirror Fortress. Ooh, I like that lore reference there. Okay. So they got 42 health, 28 movement points, 11 defense, and 9 resistance. And like orcs have the greatest physical damage, uh, dwarves have the greatest defense, and also pretty high um, resistances as well. So let's see, on gold medal they gain armor piercing, which negates the armored trait, and um, basically plus two physical damage, uh, and this is plus two defense, so they negate each other. Um, 12 physical damage per uh, action point. Pikemen automatically gain first strike and polearm, First strike means whenever you are defending against a, a physical attack, you will attack the enemy first. Polearm increases your physical damage by 5 when attacking the uh, mounted units or flying units. You also have plus 2 defense, so again that's also 13. And then all the dwarf abilities. Here's your tier 2 cavalry unit. And giant boars, giant pigs. Um, you pr almost don't even need these giant... Uh, pole arms or whatever uh, halberds I think they're called so yeah with the size of these boars tusks a wild dwarf girl named Anaha yeah okay uh, here's the description for you guys it's a very long description um, yeah okay so they deal 13 physical damage per action point they're cavalry so they inherently gain charge and charge will if, as long as this unit has moved four or more hexes they're going to deal an extra six physical damage on the first attack in melee combat they're armored so it's actually 15 in defense and again all the dwarven basic abilities it's so the dwarf forge priest these guys look very nice this guy looks lost uh, and the uh, ability the description a nice short description awesome That's a nice description. Okay. So 40 health, 28 movement points, 12 defense and resistance. And on the bronze or veteran medal, they gain dispel magic. Dispel magic will just uh, get rid of all buffs or debuffs on the target. And the gold medal, they gain inflict immolation. And inflict immolation, I think, has a 7 potency chance to pass on the target. And, um,. Once per turn for every two, maybe four turns, they will take three fire damage. Something along those lines. Um, so up to three times, once per action point, the fire bolts will deal eight fire damage. Uh, it's also arcing, so it will go up and over obstacles. Eleven physical damage in melee combat. They do have a very nice ability called Guardian Flame. Basically, it's a heal that will also give the unit 40% fire protection and first strike. Uh, Fire strike. Fire strike gives all of your um, melee strikes an extra fire damage, which is very nice. Um, let's see, they can walk on lava. Uh, one of the very few units that can do it. All support units gain true sight, so they can see invisible or concealed units. Uh, they're armored, so they actually have 14 defense. And then all the dwarven abilities. But they also gain 100% fire protection. These guys are great for going against um, the Dreadnought Flame Tank or Draconians, that sort of thing. And your tier 4 unit, my favourite tier, or tier 3 unit, my favourite tier 3, uh, my favourite Dwarven unit too. Uh, a huge cost, also costs some mana. And do be careful with mana costs, because if you don't have enough mana and you try to build the unit, it will just sit there paused until you have enough mana. And so many times I've tried to build a unit and been unsure why he's sitting there paused, like, I have enough gold, what's going on? So anyway, tier 4 upkeep cost of 16, uh, here is the upgrade path, so he gains inflict immolation on veteran or bronze medal, and fire aura on elite, and I'll show that off in the uh, tomb of wonders at the end, so here they are. Personally I don't like this like animated texture these guys have, um, it's just weird, uh, let's see. And I did try to say on the internal beta. No, it makes no sense. They're not, don't even look like they're on fire. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, 70 defense, that's huge. 28 movement points, 14 defense, and 12 resistance. Uh, melee strike deals 17 damage in total per action point. That's, that's lovely. Strong will, so 100% spirit or holy protection. 
and they are also immune to all mind control effects. They can also walk on lava, and they also have dragon and giant slaying, so plus three damage against both of those. Um, these can also tunnel underground, just like the goblin tier three, and they're infantry, so they can just climb up walls instead of having to destroy them. Uh, they're armored, so they actually have 16 defense. That's huge, guys, that's huge. Uh, and look at all these uh, resistances. They've got 100% fire protection, 60% blight protection, 100 spirit protection. These guys are great. Um, so basically, the orc shock trooper is more ver uh, deals more flat damage than this guy. Um, and the orc shock trooper starts off with his inflictability. He starts off with inflict bleeding wounds. But as you can see, there's a lot of buildings that can boost your uh, dwarf firstborn to start off in veteran as well as close to it as you can get it anyway and uh, so inflict immolation will uh, deal more damage to the uh, shock trooper than the shock troopers bleeding wounds will affect this guy because he's a lot more defense and the shock trooper has a lot less resistance uh, well, that's my personal opinion what do you guys think who would win the firstborn or the shock trooper it's up to you uh, personally, I think the firstborn, but I'm totally biased. You know, I'm dwarves all the way. Uh, so yeah, dwarves are just too good. Let's check out that ability. Fire something or other. Aura. Fire aura. Yes, there it is. Um, oh, yes, yes, okay. Um, so anytime a unit performs a melee or a touch attack against whatever you've buffed this unit with, they will take five fire damage. They also have the chance to be immolated. Uh, and immolated units suffer three is, uh, fire damage and they also have minus two physical defense uh, physical damage as well and two resistance for two turns only but it's that's huge much more than the bleeding wounds uh, but again you know dwarves all the way uh, our next people are the draconians i'll see you guys in the next video